working to try and bring evidence-based practices to communities um, for practitioners who work with children with mental health, children with family mental health issues. Um, and the School Social Work has been delighted to be part of this interdisciplinary effort. And uh, thank you, thank you all for coming today. And hope you enjoy the presentation.
we could have a whole other series of lectures, discussions, debates about the value of, of diagnoses and are the, the pros and cons of using a diagnostic system. But for the moment, it's where we live and it's how we do um, designate kind of severity of depression among kids and adolescents, certainly also among adults. So we talk about, there's a core series of diagnoses, if you will, that we work with. A major depressive disorder would be considered the most extreme on that continuum, although there's a lot of, in each one of these categories, there's a lot of variability in presentation, so you just always need to keep that in mind. So major depressive disorder, for those of you that aren't familiar, a quick kind of um, uh, orientation means that you have significant depressed mood and our irritability and our anhedonia, which means loss of interest in activities. Um, and then you have to have, you have to have one of those things has to be present for at least two weeks and has to interfere with function. Uh, and then you have to also, at the same time, be experiencing a set of co-occurring symptoms, which include appetite disturbance, sleep disturbance, um, persistent fatigue, uh, difficulties with concentration, suicidal ideation, thoughts of death and dying, um, I think I said appetite disturbance, hopelessness, um, kind of really significantly being down on yourself upon both of <laughs> As I've said, these symptoms have to co-occur. They have to persist for at least two weeks. And in some studies, we require that they persist for a month for kids and adolescents. That's more of a research criteria, putting a fairly high bar. Um, and then there, and they have to interfere with the ability to function. And those are important distinctions. So there has to be some impairment. Um, because for instance, just to take a symptom, and these symptoms, each one of them taken independently has a kind of different context. So a lot of people have difficulty sleeping some points in time. There are kids who, if you interview them, the parent will say, this kid has never been a good sleeper. This has been, they've had a disrupted sleep pattern from the get-go. And if any of you have parented a kid like that, you know that it varies out in you know, a trait that really stands out and affects your everyday life. Um, so you're really looking for a change in function. A kid who is a pretty good sleeper who's now staying up later, getting up early, not being able to sleep through the night. Other disorders are dysthymia, which is uh, a lower level, if you will, of depression, uh, but persistent depressed mood that can, that really needs to persist for um, a year or so, a year to two years. Adjustment disorder with de depressed mood is um, depressive symptoms that present uh, following or in the context of a significant stressor. Um, 